Welcome everybody to this 45th class in this Bhagavad Gita study series. Hopefully, we will be able to complete chapter 9 today. With the completion of chapter 9, we are halfway through the Bhagavad Gita. So it has 18 chapters. So with the completion of chapter 9, we'll be halfway through. So we are studying the chapter Raja Vidya, Raja Guhya Yoga. Very important chapter talking about the essence of the nature of Brahman and also about Bhakti. So two very important concepts that are covered in this chapter. And as usual, we'd like to acknowledge Swami Paramarthananda Saraswati for the traditional rendering of Vedanta as it was done for over a thousand years, starting with Adi Shankaracharya. So we'll say a small prayer. Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Sadashiva Samarambam Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Salutations to the lineage starting with Lord Sadashiva with Adi Shankaracharya in the middle and continuing up to our immediate teacher Swami Paramarthananda Saraswati. So with this we go to where we left off yesterday, uh, last time. Unfortunately, there were some um, network issues. So we left off in the 25th chapter, uh, 25th shloka. So just to give a brief overview of where we are in here. So we are in the portion on um, the, the bhakti. So Bhagavan talks about two types of bhakti here. So we are in this portion. Let me go to the slide. OK. So we first saw the nature of the Nirguna Ishwar's uh, uh, um, Bhagavan, which is the Brahman, Nirguna Ishwara Swarupa Jnanam. The nature of the Nirguna means without qualities, Ishwara is Bhagavan. So Nirguna Ishwara Swarupa, nature of the God without qualities. Then the second important aspect is the samsara karanam and samsara parigharaha. And then we are moving into the, we are in the 25th verse. So this comes under bhakti. Bhagavan classifies two types of bhakti, sakama and nishkama bhakti based on motives. So bhakti can be classified in many different ways as we saw earlier. One way of classifying bhakti is, yeah, so this is based on the level, manda bhakti is dal bhakti, that's all sakama. So it's you're thinking about, oh, there's only one god, or even if there are multiple gods, I'll go ask for this favor, that favor. Then madhyama bhakti is when the god becomes the end in itself. So here, manda bhakti, god is a means to get something. In madhyama bhakti, god becomes the end. This is your end goal. And then Uttama Bhakti, you realize Aham Brahmasmi, the same entity Brahman is in me too. So that is Uttama Bhakti. And then there are different ways to worship. Some people worship Eka Rupa Ishvara. This is the only God. Then people realize there are many ways to worship God. Aneka Rupa Ishvara Bhakti. Then Vishwarupa Ishvara Bhakti. The entire universe is, is manifestation of Ishvara as the Maya coming in into matter. And Bhagavan is the nimitta karanam, the instrumental cause of this. The Brahman is the instrumental cause of the entire universe. So that is where we were. Now we are in the, we are discussing the two types of uh, bhakti, sakama and nishkama. So Bhagavan is saying, whichever way people worship, eventually it comes to me. So that's what he said in the 25th shloka. Then comes a very important shloka, very often quoted. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhaktyu pahrutam ashnami prayatatmanaha Whoever offers me with devotion a leaf, patram, patram is a leaf. Pushpam, a flower. Palam, pal, it's fruit. Toyam is water. Okay. Bhaktya prayachati, with devotion offers, prayachati offers. That devote offering, tadeham bhaktya pahrutam, 
Ashnami Prayatatmanaha. So that devout Bhakti Pakritam, the devout offering, Prayatatmanaha, the pure minded Ashnami, I eat. Eat means what I accept. So whoever offers me devotion, a leaf, flower, a fruit, or water, that devout offering of the pure minded, I accept. Prayachati means offers Bhakti Pakritam, that devout offering. And Prayatatmana is pure mind. Okay. Now Krishna says the um, when you want Bhagavan, when you think of Bhagavan as the end, the beauty is when you want the highest result. Uh, so it's very interesting this uh, concept. When you want something, so in the yajnas and pujas that they do to want something, putra kamesh yajna to do with people do a yajna to get a, a, a son or a daughter. So those kind of yajnas you have to do precisely, chant precisely apparently. Whereas if your aim is to attain Bhagavan, you don't have to worry about it. You can just offer anything with devotion. Krishna says the beauty is when you want the highest result, the puja is the least complicated. In fact, there is no complication. It is the simplest uh, puja. Sakama bhakti, when you ask for things, involves maximum rules. If you look at the Vedas, apparently, Swamiji says, in Sakama bhakti, you have to precisely follow the altar. It has to be constructed this way. Everything has to be precise. Um, in Nishkama bhakti, where Bhagavan becomes the end, your only goal is to attain moksha. There are no rules. Everything is loosened. You can do any number of mistakes. The only condition is your motive should not be any finite motive. It should be the infinite, which is moksha. And Krishna says, Prayatatmanaha, such a person is a person of purified mind. What is the purification of the mind? The person has not does not have finite goals. That is the purity. Not go after small things. The person's mind is so calm that it goes only for liberation. Bhaktiya Prayachati, Nishkama Bhaktiya Prayachati, use the language of the seventh chapter. It's, um, it comes under what type of bhakti? It's Artha, Jignasu, Arthati. No, this, if this person is a Artha or Arthati Bhakta, then that will come under Sakama Bhakti, right? Remember, we talked about the four types of Bhaktas Chatur, Vida, Bhajat, He, Maam, Jana, Sukriti, Norjuna. Artho jignasu artati, jnani chabara tarshaba, tesham jnani nitya yuktaha, eka bhaktir vishishyate. So there are four types of bhakta, but this kind of uh, prayatatmanaha, it is not an artha bhakti because artha bhakti is afflicted. Somebody who's not well praying to God to get cured, which is a valid bhakti, but nishkama bhakti is not that. Um, is it Artarti, somebody who wants money? No, it is not that bhakti. It is Jignasu. I want to know about the liberation. It is Jignasu bhakti. Right? So the, the, this is Nishkama bhakti falls under this Jignasu bhakti. And we are also not talking about Jnani. Remember, Artha, Artarti, Jignasu, Jnani. Artha is the afflicted person who is sick, who wants to get cured, sick mentally or physically. Artarti. Artarti is one who wants wealth, money. That is the second. Both are Sakama Bhakta because they want something. Then Jignasu, I want to know my true nature and merge with that. That is the Nishkama Bhakta. And finally, there's the Jnani. Jnani is not talked about here because Jnani has already attained um, liberation, uh, attained uh, the knowledge to get moksha. So this this bhakta that's talked about here, it is the jignasu bhakta or mumukshu bhakta, who is uh, agnani, close to getting uh, jnanam, but this person wants liberation or God, he wants to attain Bhagavan. Therefore, bhaktya, nishkama bhaktya prayatthati. When God is the means, um, when God is the means in sakama bhakti, your love is a fake love, Swamiji says. But uh, nishkama bhakta, um, is doing puja for the sake of Bhagavan. Therefore, that love, Bhagavan says, is the real love. Therefore, I receive that love. It's it's true um, devotion towards me, love or devotion, whatever you call it. Then, next important shloka. Yat karoshi yadashnasi 
यजुहोषि दासीयत यपस्यसि कौंतेय तत्कुष्वदर्पणम O oh, son of Kunti, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer as oblation, whatever you give as charity, whatever austerity you undertake, dedicate it as an offering to me. So that is what um, Bhagavan says, and he has repeated that previously too. If you remember the third chapter, Mai sarpani karpani sanyasyatyatma jetasa nirashir nirmamo bhutva yud. Yes, renouncing all actions in me with the mind focused on the higher self, that is the Atma, without expectations, mindness, and anxiety, may you fight. So, same thing, Bhagavan keeps repeating it. Every shakkam, he repeats it. There, the focus is on Atma, your higher self. Here, it is on the focus on Brahman. Okay? Suppose a person, now, what's the, why is he bringing this uh, shloka? Whatever you do, whatever you offer, why is he saying that? Suppose a person says, I don't have a patram, I'm very poor. I don't even have a fruit to offer. Patram, pash, uh, pushpam, palam, toyam. Therefore, what can I do? Bhagavan says, whatever you're associated with at the moment, offer that as a arpanam, devotion to me. So it becomes pure. Any work, even the most mundane work you do, dedicate it to the Lord. So it can function as a puja. Therefore, offer every action to me. That is the message of this shloka. Then Bhagavan moves on and he says, what's the, the, the result of this? Shubha shubha palair evam moksha se karma bandhanaihi sanyasa yoga yuktatma vimukta Thus, you will be freed from the bondage of actions. Karma will not cling to you. That, the, that cause good and bad results. Actions cause good and bad results. In the Yoga Sutras also, it says, Karma Ashukla Akrishnam. Yogina Trividam Itaresham. So, Karma of the yogi is neither white nor black. It's neither good results nor bad results. For all the rest, it is three types, good, bad, and mixed. With the mind firmly set on renunciation and karma yoga, you will be liberated while living, and you will come to me. Shubha ashubha palair evam. Shubha palam means good results. Ashubha palam means bad results. Okay. Both of them you will be freed from. Moksha se karma bandhanai. Karma bandhanai is bondage of karma actions. Moksha se you will be liberated, freed from that. Sanyasa yoga yuktatma. With the um, mind firmly set. Yukta means just yoked. Firmly set on renunciation. Renunciation of what? Of the fruits of actions. And karma yoga. Yoga refers to karma yoga. Vimukto Mam Upaishasi, you will be liberated while living and you, you will come to me. The result of the Nishkama Bhakti or the Karma Yoga is pointed out here. That's the message of the shloka. So here, when Krishna says is every karma or every puja you do, you can uh, it can give you two forms of punyam. So uh, Swamiji here says, so to be born as a human being is because of a punyam, apparently. To get a desire for moksha. Uh, it's, it's a spiritual punyam, and to get association with a guru is a spiritual punyam again. Puja can be uh, can give you one of these two types of punyam, but you cannot ask for everything. Nishkama Bhakta converts all the puja into spiritual punyam. Therefore, that person renounces. That person is not interested in material punyam, and of course, uh, uh, he, this person is also free from material. Uh, Papam, because that person does not want material punyam, that person also does not get material papam. Therefore, Nishkama Bhakta transcends both punyam and papam by this. Sanyasa Yoga Yuktatma. This is the title for the greatest bhakta. So, one who's jignasu of all the ones who's eager to go get liberation. And Bhagavan uses 
different names throughout the Bhagavad Gita. In the second chapter, we saw Stita Pragna. This person is not a jnani, but he is very far, very close to liberation, very close. He is um, he's a great yogi, he's a great self restraint, great uh, learning everything. So, Sanyasa Yoga Yuktatma is another title for the greatest bhakta, one who is endowed with sannyasa through knowledge and karma yoga through action. So sannyasa through knowledge, what is renunciation? Not wearing saffron robes, but internal renunciation. The content of the fourth chapter, jnana karma sannyasa, through knowledge renunciation and karma yoga, content of the third chapter, through action. Is it clear so far? And now we come to a very, very important verse. Here, Bhagavan says, I do not mess with anything. For me, everybody is equal. It is because of their karma, they reap the results. I have provided everybody with eyesight. All these are things, tools you have to go on the right path. But if your mind is crooked, it can take you in the wrong path. So Bhagavan here says, Samo ham sarva bhuteshu Namedveshyosti na priyaha Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya Maite teshu chapya ham Snama aham, I am the same towards all beings. Sarva bhuteshu, towards all beings, I am the same. Name dveshyaha asti na priyaha. Name dveshyaha asti means there is no one hateful to me. Na as na priyaha asti. No one is dear to me as well. They're all the same. One not one person. This doesn't mean we, he doesn't like all of us. He loves all of us equally. That's what Bhagavan is trying to say. No one is specially dear or specially hateful. It is like electricity. Electricity, light, it's like light, you can say. Light illumines everything. In the presence of light, robberies takes place. In the presence of light, light, neurosurgery takes place to save a person. Can you blame light for that? No. Light just provides a medium. So, um, in the previous word, Bhagavan says, Nishkama Bhakta will merge into me, by which Krishna implies that the Sakama Bhakta will not merge into me. Therefore, a doubt can come. Swamiji very beautifully explains this. Bhagavan is partial. This is the doubt which will come. I favor the Nishkama Bhaktas. If you are asking for good health and wealth and all that, I do not favor you, Bhagavan. This is what... Um, Bhagavan is trying to say, this is the doubt which will come. So that is why Bhagavan is clarifying it here. Bhagavan is not par partial. Some people um, um, may think, oh, he takes to and to himself, merges, embraces, whereas other bhaktas he keeps a safe distance from. Um, and then, so to clarify that, uh, Shankaracharya in the Saundarya Lahiri um, says the moonlight falls everywhere equally whether it's a dirty pond or a beautiful house. Krishna says, my grace is equal for all. And in fact, I cannot give more to someone. I cannot even withdraw. Just as the sunlight is natural, sun cannot withdraw or give. Similarly, Bhagavan's Anugraha is equally available for everybody. That is the content of the middle chapter. Remember, we um, saw the... One of the things, the mi middle chapter is the fact that so in the, in the middle chapter, yeah, Ishwara Anugraha, remember that? So the Ishwara Anugraha is available to everybody. It's just how we tap into it that matters. Okay? Is that clear? So this is a very important shloka because he very clearly said it's your karma which does this. So now the comparison and contrast of the sakama bhakti and nishkama bhakti is over. So two types of bhakti based on motive. That's how he um, compares and classifies. Now come, we'll come to the, the final um, five shlokas. 
which talks about the glories of bhakti final portion of this very important chapter now this is a very important shloka as well api chet sudurachara bhajate mam ananya bhag sadur evacha evasa mantavya samvyak pyavasito hi sah durachara means dur means like duryodhana dur means bad dur achara means conduct acharati means how do you conduct yourself dur achara means one of um, improper conduct su dur achara means highly improper conduct even if a person is of a highly improper conduct api ched even if ched if api even if sudur achara have a highly improper uh, person of highly improper conduct worships me seeking nothing else without wavering this person had very highly improper conduct but that person wants to change it, turn over new leaf mom ananya bhajate mom ananya bak means worships me seeking nothing else fixed one pointed goal without wavering sadur eva samantavya that person must be considered mantavya means considered sadhu who is saint only sadhu who eva only as a saint nothing else this person must be considered as a saint only samyak pyavasito hi saha that person pyavasito means resolved samyak means correct samyak pyavasito hi saha or properly he has resolved properly this person has resolved correctly okay the bhakti um swami ji says is a sadhana which can be started at any stage of life unlike jnana yoga this is the very important point he is trying to say at this moment if you think i'm going to turn over a new leaf you can do that whereas jnana yoga requires study you see that so bhakti he says is a way to is a very quick shortcut path to go there jnana yoga requires a lot of the study then we talked about karma yoga it also requires a lot of purification doing tapas all those things bhagwan gives a shortcut he's talking about bhakti and with that bhakti very of course you still have to go through karma yoga and jnana yoga but if you are struggling to get on to these paths use the shortcut that is the bhakti eventually it will take you through karma yoga through jnana yoga and get liberation so bhakti is the shortcut if you are struggling to get into this use the shortcut method which is bhakti so jnana yoga cannot be started at any stage because it requires a lot of preparatory disciplines whereas to become a bhakta you do not need any qualification bhakti is simple even after bhakta a person in distress can start even a materialist person can start with bhakti and that person to that person wants to start a factory they do a puja they'll get more profit so the person will be inclined to do this and of course a spiritual student is a jignasu bhakta bhagavan is also defined according to the level of intellect if the intellect is not sharp let's say we um, will start with ekarupa bhakti and if the person is little mature aneka rupa bhakti and finally when the person is ready for intellectual analysis arupa ishvara bhakti also thus depending on the level Um, you always have a slot this is one point krishna highlights and e- even in the spiritual in the spiritual path most people don't go in because they have guilt i am not clean enough to go and that is the one that bhagavan is trying to clarify here you um, even if you are the worst of the sinners you don't have to have guilt you can start right that moment that's what bhagavan is trying to say okay shiv bhavati dharmatma shashvat chantim nigachati kaunte ya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati shipram very quickly bhavati dharmatma that person becomes a noble one and gains shashvat shashvat means eternal 
shantim nigachati, that person gains or goes to a place of eternal peace. O son of Kunti, Kaunteya Pratijani hi, may you know for certain, Name Bhakta Pranashyati, my devotee never perishes. Bhagavan is giving a guarantee card, he's giving a warranty that my devotee never perishes. Okay, is it clear so far? Last three shlokas. Mampi Partha Vyapashrit. Okay, this is also an important shloka, but you have to interpret this properly. He partha hip. Mam hipartha vyapashritya. Okay. Um, wh what does it mean? Um, Ashritya means taking refuge. Vyapashritya means taking refuge. Mam, those who indeed take um, re take refuge in me, yepi, even if they are, suhu means who are. Papa Yonayaha of sinful birth. So sinful birth doesn't mean it is like a like a sin. Bhagavan, you have to understand this carefully. It means you have a disadvantage, a handicap, physical, mental, or intellectual handicap. Okay, some people they're not their mind doesn't work very smartly. Or they may be born in a home, a parental or environmental handicap poor place where there's surrounded by all kinds of violence. This is environmental handicap. Our parents are not nurturing. They're not good. They're not spiritual. Parental handicap. Or the person can be born to your parents who are nastikas, atheists. Imagine Prahlada was born to Hiranyakashipu, a Rakshasa. But even Prahlada was, was a great devotee. So. Bhagavan says, even those people can attain me. So, first one is Papa Yonayaha, who are of uh, sinful birth, but you have to interpret it as disadvantaged birth, disadvantaged from physical, intellectual, parental handicap, or environmental handicap, everything. Um, so, that is Papa Yonayaha, people who do not, do not have a conducive atmosphere for spirituality. Next comes the very important one. Striyaha. Stri means woman. Striyaha, you have to interpret carefully. He is talking about the three types of um, inner personalities. They are not talking about the whether person is physically women or physically man. So striyaha here is um, interpreted as the um, gunastriyaha, people possessed of the, the, the feminine qualities. So we all have male and feminine qualities. When we have high in emotions like concern for children, welfare, all that, that is gunastriya. This, that is the, the, the guna becomes three guna. That is the one where you are caring, loving, all that. That is the gunastriyaha. And um, why do we know that? Because in the Tattva Bodha, Tattva Bodha is a Prakarana Granthi, and all these Prakarana Granthis, they, they talk about Vedanta as purely an activity of the mind. Your gender, physical stature, height, weight, nothing matters. So, Gunastriya is the context in which you have to interpret this. Vaishyaha, okay, this is another thing. Vaishyaha means it is not Jati Vaishyaha, born into a Vaishya trading class. Guna Vaishyaha. Why does he use the term Vaishya? Why is he not talking about Brahmana Kshatriya? So um, we have to use the word Swabhavajam Striyaha for the previous thing or, and not Sharira Striyaha. Similarly, here um, the Vaishyas are given to, um, so they have 
there are yoguna, but for selfish needs. So Brahmana has is predominant of Sattva guna. And the Kshatriyas are predominant of Rajoguna, but Kshatriya, they are selflessly active. Kshatriya, they want to protect their only, they are very passionate, they can go to war, but they protect selflessly, so it's higher. The Vaishya wants profit for himself or herself. So it is selfishly active. So Bhagavan, the Guna Vaishya puts lower. So this uh, quality refers to Guna Vaishya quality. And also the Shudraha, menial worker. We saw in the fourth chapter as Tamoguna Pradhana. So one who is given to indolence, laziness, animalistic living, eat, drink, and be merry. So with a tamasic mind, they're very close to our animals. Those are, they're called Guna Shudraha by their nature, not because of the birth. Okay? This, uh, it's an important shloka because it has to be understood properly. It is not guna striyaha, guna vaishyaha, guna. It is guna vaishyaha, guna striyaha, guna shudra, not jahati striyaha, jahati shudra, jahati vaishya. Okay? And then, kim punar brahma brahmana punyaha bhakti then Kim and then again Punaha, what to talk of the Punyaha Brahmanaha, virtuous Brahmins, those who have done a lot of Punyams in their previous Janma. To get this birth, Rajarshayastata and the devout royal sages, kings, uh, the, who are like great kings like Janaka, having gained this impermanent and joyless world, world, may you worship me. Anityam, Asukam, Lokam, Imam Prapya, having Imam Prapya, the uh, Imam Lokam Prapya, having gained this. Lokam, what type of lokam this is? Anityam, it is impermanent. Asukam, look at the word he is using. There is no true joy in this world. Asukam lokam, he is using strong words. Prapya, having gained this, bhakti is your only way. Worship me. That's the easiest path. So Bhagavan is giving another option. He is glorifying bhakti here. He glorified jnana yoga. He glorified Karma Yoga. Now he's glorifying Bhakti as a shortcut. And Bhagavan here gives the definition of Guna Brahmana and Guna Kshatriya. Guna Brahmana is Sattva Guna Pradhana. By birth, this person is spiritually oriented. There is no craving for Artha or Kama, pleasure or wealth. This Guna Brahmana, because of Purva Janma Sadhana, Guna Kshatriya, is a rajasic person, extrovert, but as I said, this person um, is selflessly active. And therefore, Bhagavan says, Guna Brahmana and Guna Kshatriya are, have a little bit of advantage. Certainly, their bhakti will help them quicker to attain liberation. Therefore, uh, Krishna asked the question, Kim Punaha, if the disadvantage is pe people themselves will get the benefit, what to talk of the advantaged people? He talks about the Brahmanas, the Guna Brahmana, Guna Kshatriyas, advantaged people. And it is Anityam Asukam Lokam, full of problems. Therefore, Bhagavan says, do not postpone because you, know, you do not know what kind of problems will come up in this world. It is a fleeting problem riddled world. The best thing you can do is to spend some time for spirituality. The rest I will take care of. This is Bhagavan, what Bhagavan is saying. Any questions so far? Everything okay? Ravi, any questions? All okay? Good, uh, Ganeshi, good. Okay. Final shloka, very important, often quoted shloka. In this, Bhagavan gives the definition of a bhakta. So he knows Arjuna will again ask. What's the definition of bhakta? He's going to give the definition of a bhakta. A very 
uh, often quoted sloka. Man mana bhava mat bhakta ha madhya ji mam namaskuru mame vaishya si yuktai pam atmanam mat parayana ha man mana bhava manaha ma bhava may you fix the mind on me manaha here refers to the mind may you fix the mind on me mat bhaktaha bhava be my devotee bhava be smith uh, this you have to use the bhava for everything mat bhaktaha bhava matyaji bhava be my worshipper mam namaskuru surrender to me then what will happen mameva eshyasi yuktaivam when you fix the mind in this manner you will atmanam mat parayanaha you will reach the ultimate goal me alone who am the same as yourself bhagwan puts everything in a very concise way evam in this manner yuktaha fix the mind manaha manaha yuktaha fix the mind so the lifestyle of a bhakta is beautifully delineated in this uh, shloka it's a very beautiful verse popular verse somebody asks who's a bhakta this uh, bhagavan defines five factors what are the five factors that make one a bhakta mat bhakta bhava develop bhakti towards me so lord can be looked up as a means to a worldly end wealth and everything or as an end in itself in the beginning stages you need not look up to god as an end it does not matter you learn to love god at least as a means for the fulfillment of worldly needs which is what we call sakama bhakti even that is fine mat parayanaha you understand that the worldly goals have their limitations she says just develop bhakti towards me then you will understand worldly goals have limitations they cannot give real peace they cannot give real security they cannot give real happiness because worldly objects they are in themselves insecure in nature people you can't rely on people they themselves are insecure then bhagwan says man mana bhava once bhagwan has become the primary goal the mind should not let lose sight of the um goal so man manaha bhava so just um your mind has to be constantly yoked in bhagavan madhya ji bhava convert every one of your actions into worship of bhagavan then mam namaskuru when you grow spiritually surrender be humble don't become arrogant so these this is these are the five factors which make one a bhakta so with that we come to the end of the ninth chapter om tat sat iti shrimad bhagavat gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna sampade jnana vigyana um, raja guhya raja raja vidya raja guhya yogo nama Navamodhyaya ha. Stop the recording.